Hello world, today we're gonna to talk about Matrix and how you can use it as a beginner and how we're gonna get started. We're gonna keep this very brief today because I want all of you to understand Matrix and get on it hopefully if it's something that works for you. This is part of our recent push to try to get more tutorials out there so people know how to use the tools we commonly recommend on TechLore. So if you like that kind of stuff, get subscribed. And also I wanna thank our sponsor today, which I'm about to cut to for sponsoring this video to make this kind of stuff possible. So make sure to stick around. This video is sponsored by Local Monero, a service allowing you to privately acquire Monero with absolute safety. They're a KYC free peer-to-peer -peer trading platform, meaning they don't require customer information when you both buy and sell Monero, both online and in person, with any payment method in any country, in any currency, even including other cryptos. Tune in later for why Local Monero offers one of the safest methods to obtain Monero so you can make transactions online with the utmost privacy. So again, big thanks to our sponsor, and also don't forget to check out our Patreon if you like these kind of tutorials. So let's start from the basics here. Matrix is open source, meaning the source code is available, meaning we can verify it's, it's doing what it says it does. It's good for privacy, it's good for security, and it's good for transparency. It's a decentralized protocol, meaning it's not really centralized in any way to one single entity, unlike something like WhatsApp that is controlled by WhatsApp, which is controlled by Facebook. It's also a protocol, not necessarily a messenger. We'll talk about what that means down the road, but we will be focusing on the messaging aspect of things, at least in the beginning of this video. So as of right now, think of it as a messenger, but that will change by the end of the video. It's worth mentioning Matrix is trusted by Red Hat, Mozilla, Uber, Samsung, the United States Armed Forces, Tadhack, W3F, UpCloud, and many more people. Now, what's this supposed to do? So obviously Matrix is going to offer you end-to-end -end encrypted messaging. It's gonna offer some group chats. It offers kind of a community setup that we'll talk about audio and video calling, bridging, and more. Today's video will focus more on the messaging aspect of things, but we will talk more about audio, video, and bridging towards the end. Rather than just throwing all this information and data at you in the beginning, I'd rather just slowly explain things as we go through the tutorial because a lot of these things we have to explain just going through how to use Matrix. So let's go ahead and start off. And here's our first example. So try Matrix now. If you go to matrix.org and you click try now on the top right of the screen, you're gonna end up here. Now, decentralization oftentimes comes with situations like this, which is there's no central client. With WhatsApp, you go on the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store and you download WhatsApp. Matrix has clients that you get to choose to use in order to use Matrix. There are clients for pretty much every platform. There's even like a beta Nintendo 3DS Matrix client that's really sweet. All these clients do is they allow you to use Matrix. That's it. You can use and create a Matrix account and use any client. If you don't like a certain client, drop the client and sign into another client and you use Matrix from there. You're gonna see there's different things that each client prioritizes. So WeChat over here is for people who like command line interfaces. Yeah, it's terrible, but some people do like that. Element is kind of the absolute opposite of that, which is a feature rich web client, which is probably the most like any other messaging client you'll use as of right now. In fact, if you're watching this video for the first time and this is your first time using Matrix, I would highly recommend starting with Element because it's going to include the most up-to-date features because it's developed by the same team that develops the Matrix protocol. I find it a little clunky to use, but I find all these clients a little bit clunky to use. That's kind of the inherent flaw, in my opinion, of the decentralized nature of Matrix. So that's step one for Matrix. You pick a client. If this is your first time, I'd recommend just using Element, but I strongly recommend after you get set up and you start tinkering with things, try out different matrix clients because there might be one that you actually prefer much more than Element and it's gonna make your whole matrix experience a lot better. I also wanted to shout out Siphon specifically for including our community in their F-Droid screenshots, which I thought was awesome. All right, so you're here. This is your first time using matrix and we're using elements. You're gonna click create account. And this is the next major explanation of how Matrix works. So up here, you're gonna see matrix.org, host account on matrix.org, huh? If you click edit, you can put other home servers. Now, if we open a new tab and we type matrix home servers, you're gonna find some lists of just different home servers. And here's just a small selection. And this is just from a quick search that I'm doing live. The easiest way to explain this to people who have never used this before, it's like email. And the reason why is because just like email, email is decentralized, just like matrix, by the way. So it's a very good comparison. If you have Gmail, right? and someone else has Yahoo, you guys can still email each other. 
because it's decentralized, but there's a shared protocol between these two email providers. Same thing with Matrix. So you can join matrix.org, you can join NeoChat, or I don't know, I, all I use is matrix.org and it's what I'm gonna recommend most people start with. Um, previously in the past, matrix.org used to be extremely slow to use, but that has been drastically improved. And so that's actually gonna lead me to my next point. So now you know that there's different home servers to choose from and you know that they can all communicate with each other. So you might ask, well, why? First, it's for the backend technical aspect of things. Again, Matrix is meant to be decentralized. The tricky thing with decentralization is a majority of Matrix users still use matrix.org. So how decentralized is Matrix, the whole protocol really? And I would argue, well, it's probably not as decentralized as people think it is. Um, but either way, the technology and everything is set up so that it can be decentralized. If you don't like matrix.org, you can host your own home server or you can join any other home server. So it is technically decentralized. But do realize that in, in practical day-to-day -day use, it might be a little bit less decentralized than you might think it is. Second, and this is probably the most like impactful day-to-day -day use reason, home servers affect the speed of your messenger. You're, this is literally the server you're gonna be communicating with. So some servers are very loaded. Matrix.org used to be an incredibly loaded server and it used to be incredibly slow to use. Third, some home servers have rules and regulations that others don't. Mozilla uh, infamously had some issues where they were banning their users just because they joined certain rooms that Mozilla didn't want their users joining. But let's say home server X doesn't like basketball and people are joining a basketball room. Theoretically, that home server can be like, all right, if you join this basketball room, we're gonna kick you off our home server. So that's kind of another thing. You have to check out the rules and regulations of each home server to see if there's something uh, that just doesn't align with their rules. And the final thing, you are trusting your home server with your privacy and security, to some extent. If you have end-to-end -end encryption, for example, you don't really need to trust your home server because the client and, and the encryption is making sure that there's uh, really no need to, to have to trust the home server, even if it's compromised. However, there are some things that you are trusting your home server with, mainly regarding metadata. And this is, in my opinion, at least another place where decentralization is a little bit harder to work with and actually serves as a con for privacy and security is it's much harder to have a unified, guaranteed, safe experience across all different use cases. So keep in mind, you need to trust your home server as well as the home servers of everyone else that you're contacting within a message or a group. With all of that said, that was a very long explanation, but I guarantee it, it's necessary if you're gonna be using Matrix. I recommend, if you're new to this, just choose matrix.org. And just so you know, some home servers do not require an email. So this email requirement on Matrix is actually tied to the home server. So don't get turned away just because of that. Feel free to switch to a different home server if you don't like the email requirement. All right, so we're signing in for the first time. And I just got in. Send a direct message is probably the first place I'd get started. It's worth mentioning that private DMs all have end-to-end -end encryption by default, but it's really good to verify keys. So I'll show you what that means. So I just created a new chat with um, the Henry account, which by the way, people always try to do and I never accept them. So don't bother trying. I don't know why everyone tries to DM me on Matrix. In your messages, it's like a normal messaging client. Hello? Um, this all has end-to-end -end encryption by default. You can verify the encryption as well. So if you tap the name here, it's gonna show their, their information. And what you can do is you can verify the user. So that's gonna wait for Henry to accept the verification prompt. So over on my personal client here, you're gonna see this little pop-up. So you're gonna go ahead and accept the verification request. Now you're gonna see this verified by emoji on both ends. Again, this is something that you would do like in real time, possibly together in the same room. And then you're gonna make sure they all match. So either you already have a safe place of communication, let's say um, you've been emailing each other and now you wanna get on Matrix. You can email each other your emojis before you say they match to make sure that they match on both ends. Or if you're talking with someone in real life, you can just quickly show your phones. And if they match, you click they match. This is an easy way to verify encryption keys. They're not actually done with emojis, it's just for simplicity's sake. So that's how you verify end-to-end -end encryption with someone. Aside from that, that's really it for direct messages. You have emojis, you can add stickers, um, you have voice messages, polls, and you can send your location to people. Now let's talk about groups. So there's no traditional group that you might think. Um, in Matrix, or at least Element, it's going to be a room. So 
private group. I'm still gonna call it a group, um, just so you understand the group is pretty much a room, so you can make it private or public. And this is where it differs from a direct message. You can enable end-to-end -end encryption or not. Bridges and bots won't work when you enable end-to-end -end encryption, and we'll talk about that more down the road. Enabling end-to-end -end encryption may not actually be the smartest thing to do all the time. If you have a public room, they actually by default disable the end-to-end -end encryption option. And the reason for that is it's a public room that anyone can join to read the messages anyway. So it already kind of questions why you would even have end-to-end -end encryption when it's public and anyone can join it to get access to the messages. But also you'd have to somehow verify encryption keys with a huge number of users and it would just be ridiculous to have to manage. So there's really no incentive to have end-to-end -end encryption on a public room. Generally speaking, if this is just a group chat with your friends or family, go ahead and add a topic, name it, make it invite only, enable end-to-end -end encryption, and then create the room. That's probably like the most default settings I can give you. Then you can invite people to the room. And once everyone's in the room, it's going to be exactly the same thing as a private message. You can verify profiles and encryption keys, and you're gonna have access to the same exact feature set. So with a public room, the only difference is you can make it discoverable in the search. You can go ahead and see all of these different rooms that are available, right? And here's actually our room, which is awesome. So if you do join Matrix, go ahead and check out our communities on there because I think they're really awesome. If you want just a default place to just talk about the Matrix protocol, go ahead and check out the Matrix HQ room. Um, you can also change home servers and see what rooms are being hosted on different home servers. So keep that in mind. The room itself is also hosted on a home server. Pretty much, like I really encourage all of you because there is so much good stuff and good people and good organizations in the privacy community who are on Matrix. So I really encourage you, if you are using Matrix, to go ahead and go to Explore Rooms and join one of these public rooms. I'm going to go ahead and join the F-Droid one, um, but there's like a Calyx Institute one, there's a Calyx OS one, um, the new oil has his Matrix room, there's an opt-out podcast room. Uh, we have our stuff. Pretty much every major project is hopping over to Matrix, and I really encourage you to get involved there. So now we're on the topic of communities, and one thing we haven't covered yet is this very far left panel, at least on Element, it's going to be the far left panel. These are spaces. I'm going to start off by saying I do not believe spaces cleanly replaces Discord. So for those who don't know, Discord is kind of like Slack where you have channels on the left, um, but it's all part of the same community. Um, so if we're joining this F-Droid community, for example, this is just a room. So it's just one continuous stream of discussion. But let's say they wanted to talk to have something that covers F-Droid, maybe something that covers apps, maybe something that covers um, compatibility. They could have like three different discussions all happening at the same time, right? That would be more like Discord or Slack or something like that. Well, that's what Spaces tries to do. So if you went to our website, techlore.tech, or you go in the video description and you click our matrix link, it actually directly takes you to our space. So this would go ahead and take you here. You click join and you see it's a public space. And now it shows up on the left side of your screen. And now we have all these rooms that you can join. So this is why it's just, I, I'll try not to trash on Matrix too much, especially given it is a Matrix tutorial, but like you have to manually join every room that you want to join. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all that. We'll patiently wait. <laughs> well, it joined memes first, so we're gonna go ahead and go to memes. And even though I did join it and it said I joined it, I apparently have to click join. While this is loading and likely will never work, um, communities used to be what spaces are. So communities used to be a much worse implementation of spaces, which is uh, not a good thing. But if you go ahead and click spaces, you're gonna see rooms that you've joined, if theoretically, if they actually joined, which clearly I can't get that to do on camera, which actually um, leads me to my next point. Expect bugginess and expect slowness. I don't want to set unrealistic expectations here. Matrix is very sluggish to use in my opinion. Uh, it is based on the client. It is based on the home server. There's a lot of factors that go into it, but personally I find Matrix to be a little bit um, rough around the edges in a lot of places. And I personally am reporting that to you via matrix.org home server using elements on all my devices. Um, but at, I mean, I literally am struggling to join our own communities right now. So apologies in advance. Um, that's also why we have different community options as well. 
So as I was covering that, it looks like one actually did join. So as you can see, this is our main room. So we have all of this. Now you're gonna get notifications. You can change notification options to just none. Mentions and keywords are all messages. So I'm gonna set this to none because it's a public group with thousands of messages a day. So you probably don't want not constant notifications. Though I do question if some of you are keeping up with every message somehow, which I don't know how you do it. And that's a space. So you can already start to see the rooms slowly pop up here on the left. Um, but you're gonna see all these rooms on the left and it's gonna be kind of similar to how on Discord you have different channels. But again, I find it um, to be nowhere near as clean and polished as a solution, but Spaces is still in development, so we'll probably only see improvements going forward. So let's do a check-in. You now know how clients work and why there's different clients on Matrix. You now know what different home servers are. You now know how to create an account and the implications for doing so and how to do so. You also know how to create a direct message and the different pros and cons of direct messages in Matrix. You now know how to create a group chat. And just to, just a note on that, they actually call it a group chat themselves here, even though it's a private room. So again, little things like that on um, like different Matrix clients can be a little bit rough around the edges. I find that personally enough to confuse someone who's brand new to the service. Like, is it a room or chat? Like, what's the difference? So really getting that terminology down is gonna help people a lot, I think. And we also talked about how to explore public rooms and also how to join actual matrix spaces, which are kind of like Discord Slack communities. Not much left to cover. So let's go back to that direct message that I had open. You can do voice messages. So you go ahead and start recording. Test, test. There you see the waveform. Then you go ahead and send it. You, uh, they have an integration manager so that you can pretty much add different stickers. You just have to accept the privacy policy. So you have all these sticker packs and things like that. And another important thing is there's voice and video calls. So you can go ahead and do a call. You can also do a video call. Right, there I am. So already I want to really make people think of Matrix as a protocol rather than a messenger because it is a protocol, right? It allows you to do video calls. It allows you to do voice calls. It allows you to make public and private groups. It allows you to join communities and spaces. It allows the ability to use um, lots of different forms and mediums. And one really important one is bridging. And I think the best demonstration here is if we go back to the Techlore space and we go to the security and privacy room. Look at this. On the left is Discord and on the right is Element, a Matrix client. This person sent this message on Matrix. On Discord, their message showed up as a bot. Same thing here. Coldfire is a Discord user, and he shows up on the Matrix end. Essentially, we have merged these two group chats together. And what you'll notice if you join the Techlore space is all the rooms in the space align with the rooms on Discord. So we do this so that people can be in the same exact community around the same people on either Discord or Matrix, depending on their threat model and what service they prefer. Because personally, I find Discord much more usable and accessible to people, but I find Matrix the much more privacy friendly and transparent platform. Um, and so we brought them together. Some people will be like, oh my gosh, well, Discord's now collecting my data. And it's like, well, it's a public room anyway. So Theoretically, if that was your concern, literally anyone can join the room and still access your data. So just be aware when you're joining any public room, not just ours, expect everything you send to be public. So treat that appropriately and manage a threat model appropriately. If I go here, this is the Henry account and I send a message on Discord. Hello, everyone. Watch the matrix end. Boom, it shows Henry is typing. It's gonna be delayed. by a sec, <laughs> or a few secs, boom. So it came through. On the matrix end, it literally looks like a matrix user sent that. On the discord end, if someone responds, it's gonna show the bot's status. <laughs> I don't normally just go in and say hello everyone, so it's probably gonna be a little weird for people. Like, oh my gosh, Henry's active and he's just saying hello everyone, what's going on, are we in trouble? So if you go to matrix.org slash bridges, you're gonna see all these different services that you can bridge to Matrix. So they also have Slack, they have LinkedIn, Facebook Messenger, Skype, iMessage, Instagram, Twitter, Telegram. You have all these different options. Look at this. You can even do Signal if you wanted to. Now, the really cool thing, so I'm gonna give you kind of a quick little rundown here. This is, on paper, super sweet. 
right? Because this means that let's say your entire family is on WhatsApp. You can set up a matrix room, bridge it to WhatsApp, and you can still communicate with them on WhatsApp without needing to use WhatsApp. Um, it can also be a great transition for people. Um, maybe someone is slowly getting used to matrix, but they don't want to delete their WhatsApp account yet. So this can be a great transitional thing to help people move away from whatever they're stuck on. It's also just good if you're in a group and you just can't agree on a platform. So we've had this happen in the past for some internal stuff we've done with collaborations with different creators and things like that. Some of them are like, I'm not going to use Telegram, but I'm on Matrix. And some of them are like, I'm on Telegram, but I'm not going to use Matrix. And so we just set up a bridge so that everyone's happy. Now, what I will tell you, there are some publicly available services that you can use to bridge things. Most, uh, most famously is t2bot.io. And this is mainly a Discord one, but I do believe they have a Telegram one as well. And that's last I checked, they might have more at this point. However, if we go down to something like Signal, you're gonna see there's not really anything that does the work for you. And also you're gonna see that some things don't work like formatted messages. So two big negatives of bridging. One, there isn't an easy service for every platform. So for something like Signal, you're probably gonna have to host your own bridge and don't quote me on this, but I'm fairly certain you're likely violating some terms of service on the signal side of things. The second thing with bridging, it's not the same experience on every platform. We used to have a Telegram bridge set up, so we had a three-way bridge. <laughs> so we had a three-way bridge with Telegram, Matrix, and Discord. And the Telegram end was actually pretty terrible because it didn't give the Matrix users unique profile pictures. And it also didn't do a good job of separating usernames. So on the Telegram end, it looked like almost the same user is just sending the same messages over and over and it totally spams the entire chat. So it was not a very great experience on the Telegram side of things, whereas on Discord, it actually does give Matrix users their own username and it better differentiates uh, users. So it actually is more of a unified experience that makes them feel like they're in Discord a little bit better. If you were to remove the bot status on Discord, it probably would look pretty good. Finally, the last thing about bridges that I really want to highlight, a lot of them, if not all of them, I'm sure there's a way, but as far as I know, most of them will not work in rooms with end-to-end -end encryption. Now, I don't know, you know which, which bridges do or don't work with that. That's something you should look into individually for your specific use case, but just be aware that having end-to-end -end encryption on any of your rooms will make bots and bridges a little bit more challenging to work with. To recap everything, we talked about different matrix clients. We talked about home servers. We talked about the different features available in clients like Element. Keep in mind, lots of those features will be carried over slower to other clients. So I believe voice messages are a somewhat new thing. So you might not see voice messages in some of the other clients for a while. Again, decentralization has cons and that's one of them. You're not gonna have the same unified experience across different clients. We covered verifying end-to-end -end encryption between two users. We talked about spaces and communities, and we talked about many other things um, to make your matrix experience as good as possible. We also covered bridges and we covered VOIP, which is like voice and audio calls. With all of that said, you are good enough to go ahead and start using matrix. Just always keep that email analogy on the back of your head. And that's what I personally have found to be very effective for people new to the idea of matrix. Be like, hey, it's just like email. You guys can have different email providers, but still communicate because it's a protocol. Remember matrix is a protocol. As for things this tutorial did not cover, this tutorial did not cover like managing communities and like upgrading rooms and other things like that that might be a little bit more on the complex side of things. And we also didn't cover hosting your own home server and things like that, which are definitely more on the technical side of things that you just don't need to do to get started using Matrix. I have a few more things to say, but again, I wanna thank our sponsor for this video. Local Monero is not only one of the safest methods of acquiring and selling Monero, but the UI is extremely intuitive and features very useful guides to help everyone get started with the private by default cryptocurrency, Monero. They have an active community to help users with the process, and when you combine the polished experience with its countless security precautions, you'll see why it's just a phenomenal service front to back that anyone who wants to get involved with Monero should consider. It's definitely one of my favorite crypto services. Make sure to check out Local Monero down in the description to learn more and get started today. Final words 
If you like this tutorial and you want to get started on Matrix, don't be afraid to join our tech lore space down in the description. Again, join the space so that way you get access to all these different rooms. Go ahead and explore other public rooms. Have fun with this. It's a whole little world out there, lots of which is very revolved around privacy and security, at least as of right now. Um, I personally hope that it grows beyond that because that means that it actually is successful in reaching other communities and other people who could benefit from this technology. Utilize this, have fun with it, and good luck out there and stay safe. Finally, join our Patreon if you want to support tutorials like this. This is all totally free and um, hopefully it helps you out and you can help us out as well by joining our Patreon to keep this content free and accessible and to also improve our content going forward. Thanks for everyone who tuned in and I'll see you next time on Tech Lore.